Virenext for Rhino is faster than ever before and comes packed with powerful new features and improvements as well as a new user interface to help you work quicker. In addition, the new asset management system will help you to keep track of everything in your scene while streamlining your workflow. In this lesson, we'll explore how you can manage assets of any type and easily visualize shader hierarchies as well as preview your materials, lights, textures, and render elements in a single viewer. Then, I'll demonstrate how to save them to customized folders, which can be used in other projects or even shared between colleagues using network locations, making it possible to have a single unified library for all members of your team to access. To get started, we have here an exterior scene with a garage. Let's see how we can use V-Ray Next to quickly add some textures to it. To begin, open up the Asset Editor, and let's take a look at the updated Outliner, which we can use to navigate between the different assets in our scene. At the top, we have updated the categories shown in V-Ray Next, as well as added two new ones. The categories in blue indicate what we are viewing in the Outliner below. Currently, we are viewing the Materials tab, Lights tab, and the brand new Textures tab. We can easily preview specific categories by clicking on them, or view a combination of them in the Outliner by holding Control and clicking. Categories in white indicate that they contain some assets, but we are not currently viewing them in the Outliner. For example, the Geometry tab already contains some Clipper geometry, which we can view in the Outliner if we click on it. We also have grayed out tabs, meaning they don't contain any assets at the moment. For example, we don't have any assets in the new Render Elements tab here. If we right-click on any of the tabs, or we can just left-click if the category is empty, a drop-down menu for creating assets will appear. You can add multiple assets without closing the menu by holding Control and clicking. Then, while holding Shift, you can select multiple assets in the Outliner, or use Control a to select all assets in a category at once. Again, we can right-click on any of the other categories to add assets for geometry, lights, materials, and textures as well. And, if you are used to creating materials using the button at the footer, you can still do that as well. Besides materials, you can find here all the categories we have at the top as well for creating assets. Next, we can also create assets using the flyout menu on the left. In Vire Next, there is a new Create menu dropdown. If we expand it, you'll see that we have the same categories here as well. It also allows you to search in any specific category. For example, I can look for curve options in the textures category, or I can search all categories if I select the Create menu. In this case, let's search for a metallic material, which we can use to create PBR shaders. Together, you can use whichever of these options you find most convenient for your workflow. Right below the Create menu, you will find a library of materials that come with V-Ray. We have different types of materials organized conveniently into different folders. Just like with the Create menu, you can quickly search within these different categories or the entire material library itself. We have also introduced another major UI update related to how we view and maneuver between assets in the Asset Editor. We have now made it much simpler to visualize the material hierarchy and navigate to a child texture directly using the new Asset Management System. Every asset in the Outliner now has an icon next to its name. If you expand the drop-down arrow next to an asset, you can see all the child or referenced assets and switch between them or even drag and drop them without the need to go into each texture slot individually. This makes working with complex shaders and textures in V-Ray Next much quicker, as well as easier to understand. In addition, we have updated how we preview materials and all other assets. Now in the right-hand flyout menu, you will see a live swatch preview of the selected asset together with all of its parameters. This applies not only to materials and textures, but also for lights as well. Meanwhile, geometry and render elements display an example preview of their functionality. You can also adjust the size of the live swatch by dragging this bar beneath it. And if you want to change the swatch preview type, simply click on the three dots over here and you can choose between different modes depending on what you find convenient. You can also access even more advanced settings for a material by clicking on the Switch to Advanced Settings icon. If we drop down the reflection rollout, you'll see that many more parameters are revealed in the advanced mode 
that you can tweak to further customize your materials. In our case, let's stick with the basic mode, which offers plenty of controls for most materials and is easy to work with. Now, the garage in my scene here currently has a grayish material applied to its base called white paint. I'd like to replace that with a brick material, so let's switch to the close-up view. Back in the Create menu, let's drag and drop a generic material into the Assets list, or you can use any of the other options we discussed earlier to create one as well. Next, I'll change the swatch preview for the material to wall close-up to make it easier to see, since we'll be applying it to a wall-like structure. Now, in the Diffuse Colors Texture Swatch, I'm going to load in a bitmap called Bricks A Diffuse. Then, let's press the up arrow to go back up in the hierarchy, or you can use the hotkey combination of control and up arrow on your keyboard. Similarly, if I click on the white paint material, we can use the horizontal arrow to switch to the previously selected asset, or use the shortcut control and left arrow. Now, you'll notice that the live swatch preview updates immediately to display the brick diffuse texture we loaded in. I'd like to now make some adjustments to the texture. In VRA Next, you can use the new Wrap-In menu and choose from one of the options to change the appearance of the bitmap. In this case, let's use the Color Correction Texture. You'll see that the Wrap-In option allows you to quickly put a new texture in the texture slot while placing the original texture inside the new texture so you can modify it. This makes it easy to plug one texture into another to make adjustments right in V-Ray Next without the need to switch to another software. For example, let's change the hue and adjust the saturation, brightness, and contrast. Now, if we go back up a level in the hierarchy, we can inspect our changes in the preview. Next, in the Reflection dropdown, I'll use the same bitmap in the Reflection Color Texture slot. Simply drag and drop the texture from the Diffuse slot and choose either Paste as Copy or Paste as Instance. If you paste it as a copy, any modifications you do will affect only this unique copy of the texture. If you paste the texture as an instance, any modifications you do will affect all instances of it. Let's choose Paste as Copy so we can modify the Reflection Color's texture separately from the Diffuse. Clicking on the Texture slot, let's bring down the brightness and saturation, which will make our bricks more contrasty. Back up a level, let's also decrease the Reflection Glossiness to 0.75 to make the reflections blurrier. Next, let's scroll down and toggle on the Bump and Normal mapping, and I'm going to use a texture that is already loaded in my project. To do that, I can simply control click on the Texture tab to display all the textures used in my project along with my materials. In the Outliner, let's find the bitmap for the Bump texture loaded in there, and simply drag and drop it into the Bump texture slot. Let's choose Paste as Copy once again. Now, you'll see the bump looks a bit too subtle in the Live Swatch preview. Let's increase the amount parameter a bit to something near 1.5 and see how that helps. Alright, to organize things a bit and make our material easier to find, let's rename it to Bricks by double clicking on it. We can rename not only our materials, but also any textures used. For example, if we click the drop down arrow, we can double click to rename each texture for our diffuse, reflection, and bump parameters like so. You can also select them right-click, and choose Rename from the menu. Okay, now that this material is ready, I can easily save it to any location or library and use it later on in other projects. One way to save an asset is by clicking on the Save icon at the footer of the Asset Editor, where you'll then be prompted to choose a save location. I'm going to save this material to a custom library already set up. Next, we can quickly load in this library using the folder icon in the left-hand flyout panel and selecting it. Now, you'll see that besides the bricks material I just saved, there are other types of assets there as well. A library can contain render elements, materials, lamps, geometry, and so on. To add something to your project, you can simply drag and drop it into the assets list. For example, I'll drag this V-Ray sphere light and this material ID color render element into the project, and you'll notice how they are automatically placed in their corresponding category. You can also select a range of assets from the library by holding Shift, then right-clicking and choosing Add to Scene to add them simultaneously to the Assets list. You can also save assets to the library in the same manner. 
For example, if we make changes to an already saved material, let's say if we adjust the reflection glossiness of the bricks material, then we can drag and drop it into the library and Vray will ask if we want to replace it. To save it as an alternative option or save it to a different location, you can also just right click on it and choose Save As. Meanwhile, if someone else on your team has added assets to the same custom library folder you're currently working with, you can simply right click on it and choose Refresh to update it. This way, you can easily create shared libraries with materials and other assets or have templates that everyone in your team can access and use simultaneously. All right, let's close the flyout menus now and start an interactive render so we can apply our bricks material. Now, you'll see that we're still seeing the original white paint material for reference. With the base geometry still selected now, all we have to do is select the material, right click on it and choose apply to selection. Now, we'll see the interactive preview update and get a nice glimpse of our brick material. Okay, I'm liking how that looks so far, so let's stop the render now and switch back to the main camera view to render the whole scene. All right, the base looks pretty good now, but you'll see that the interior looks very dark. Let's explore some ways to improve our image working with light sources in V-Ray next. First, I'm gonna switch the viewport to be able to position some lights more easily. Then, let's choose a V-Ray sphere light and place it somewhere inside the garage. There's no need to worry about the size as we'll adjust that in a bit. I'm also going to add another by instancing the first sphere light. To create an instance, press and hold the left alt key and then click and drag on one of the axes on the gumball. In our case, I'll move it to the left along the x-axis. Now, let's open up the asset editor again and expand the right hand flyout menu and select the lights tab. In V-Ray Next, we can now change the size of the lights directly from the asset editor. You'll see that there is also a live swatch preview for the lights as well. Make sure you have the sphere light selected and then let's decrease the size. Notice how the light instance's size adjusts in the viewport as well when I change the size parameter. While this affects both instances, you can still scale each light independently in the viewport. If you then adjust the size parameter, it will affect both of them with respect to their different proportions. Let's set the size to 50. You can then adjust the intensity or change the color and see how it looks in the live swatch preview to get a sense of how it's expected to appear. Note that when you have very high values, the live swatch clamps the light in an intelligent way in order to prevent displaying a blown out preview. As a result, it may not match exactly what you see in your render. If we drop down the options menu, we can also make the source of the light invisible, which will be handy for our scene here. Okay, now let's select our camera view and do another render. That looks much better. All right, lastly, let's explore the new object management options available in V-Ray Next, which make it easy to work with fur, mesh light, and clipper geometries. In this scene, I'll show you how to use them with the V-Ray Clipper. To start, let's enable three layers containing surfaces, which I'll use to create sections revealing different parts of the garage. Now that you've seen how they're placed, let's leave only one surface enabled for now. Next, select the surface, and in the Object Properties, go to the V-Ray Properties and scroll down to the Clipper menu. From here, you can assign a clipper to this object. For example, you can have multiple V-Ray clippers with different settings and easily select which one to assign from this menu. In this case, I'll select Clipper 1. Let's also switch the Exclusion Mode to Include Mode so that we can pick which objects to clip. Since I only want to clip through a few objects, it will be easier to identify the objects to clip or include then doing the opposite with the other mode. Then, let's select Pick Objects and select the objects we want to be affected by the clipper. I'm going to pick the roof, the sheathing, and the garage door by right-clicking on each layer and choosing Select Sublayer Objects. Then pressing Enter to confirm the selection. The clipper surface will clip away these objects so that we can see through them. Now let's do a quick interactive render. Now you can see that the roof, the garage, and the sheathing are cut, but overall this looks relatively simple looking. Let's see if we can make the layers look more interesting using some more clippers. Go ahead and enable the second surface plane and select it, and then assign Clipper 2 to the plane in the V-Ray object properties. Once again, set it to Include Mode and click the Pick Objects button. 
Now, let's follow the same steps, but this time, turn off the layers, including plywood on the sheathing and the roof, so that it's not included in the clipping. Okay, after choosing Select Sublayer Objects for each, press Enter. Lastly, don't forget to re-enable the plywood layers, and then let's do another render. Okay, and now for the third surface, let's follow the same steps once again. First, enable the third surface geometry in the layers and select it, then assign Clipper 3 to it in the Viri Object Properties. Switch the mode to Include and click on Pick Objects. Now, this time I want to leave out the water isolation, so I'll switch off the visibility for those layers, and then select all sublayers for the roof and walls, and then hit Enter to confirm the selection. Finally, re enable the water isolation layers. And now let's do another render. Now you can see in the render that there is a red color where the third clipper is. That's because it has different settings than the other clippers. If we go back to the V-Ray object properties, we can click on the pin icon, which will open the asset editor and the settings for the selected clipper. You can see that the material in the Clipper 3 parameters is set to a specific custom red material. This is then used to fill in the gaps made by the cut. You can feel free to either choose another material or enable Use Object Material. If you toggle this on, the clipper will use the materials that are applied to the objects being clipped. OK, and now you've seen how using V-Ray Next, you can work very fast using the new Asset Management System view, tweak textures right in the Asset Editor without the need for other software, quickly refine your materials and lights using the Live Swatch Preview, and load in and share custom libraries with ease. In addition, the new Object Management workflow makes it simple to adjust and apply V-Ray geometry such as the V-Ray Clipper.